Hi, I'll be discussing a very important topic which is the intraventricular hemorrhage prevention bundle. We all know that intraventricular hemorrhage is a very important complication of prematurity and there is a risk of long-term neurodevelopmental impairment. And in general terms, when we introduce a bundle for IVH prevention, we intend to cover all babies less than 30 weeks gestation because these are the babies at highest risk of IVH. Of course, the IVH rate varies according to the gestation. The smaller the baby, the higher the risk. And uh, we will be covering some of the steps which help to prevent IVH in these babies. So the steps can be considered from the beginning. A delivery, uh, delayed cord clamping is especially important in the extreme premature babies. And this is a group where we often don't do well because of concerns that the baby is not breathing at delivery or crying at delivery. Please discuss with the obstetric team in advance and reassure them that these are extreme premature babies. We don't intend or we don't expect them to cry at delivery. We reassure the obstetrician to wait for the delayed cord clamping for 30 seconds to 1 minute as long as the cord pulsation is over 100 beats per minute. So these babies are often delivered in a good condition. There is no obstetric uh, fetal distress. And uh, even though the babies don't cry, the cord pulsation has a normal heart rate and then you can comfortably wait. Of course, the labor room temperature or the OR temperature should be adjusted before the delivery to have 24 to 25 degrees centigrade. And the golden hour approach for uh, all the aspects of care can be applied here as well to improve the overall outcome. The patient positioning in the NICU is very important. That is the most uh, important aspect of the IVH bundle. So the incubator should be tilted to achieve a 20 to 30 degree upper body elevation during the first week of life in the small babies. Most of the units do it as a routine even later on because of the possible benefit with reflux as they progress with feeds. Uh, it's very important that we have the supine midline position for three days after birth with neutral head positioning. So the head should not be turned to the sides. The main reason is that the neck is very friable in these babies and the vessel obstruction can happen, especially the uh, carotid vein can be obstructed when the neck is turned and uh, this can change the intracerebral blood flow pressures uh, increasing the risk of IVH. It's very important to ensure gentle handling during procedures like intubation and there should be a caregiver reminding the person who is doing it, making sure it's not overextending or no pressure on the neck when they are handling the babies. It's better that the most experienced team handle such babies. Remember that uh, extubation failure is fairly common. There are multiple uh, studies which are looking at what can help with extubation failure. I have shared the Iowa experience in the very, very small babies uh, and they suggest keeping the baby intubated till almost 30, 31 weeks. We don't do that uh, routinely, but we tend to keep at least the babies below 26 weeks intubated for the first week. Uh, don't rush to extubate them because the chances of extubation failure are higher the smaller the baby is and uh, actually keeping them stably ventilated is better to avoid the uh, at electrotrauma that happens when we extubate and fail and it's very difficult in terms of nursing skills to keep the babies extubated when they have so many other things happening at the same time the sugar is labile the temperature changes are labile the fluid balance is labile so you don't want to add more to that insult of course about 26 weeks i mean 26 and above they behave differently and you can extubate them at the earliest possible as suggested in the rds guideline we should avoid prone position during the first week of life and most of these babies have umbilical lines and in practice we wouldn't turn these babies prone in any case the nursing care and medical procedure should be combined. This, of course, applies to all babies and uh, you can review my uh, video on minimizing intervention where I discuss these aspects in detail. But especially in the smallest babies where there is a risk of IVH, we should also respect the infant sleep-wake cycle. Um, we should apply individualized nursing care and uh, if there are any extra procedures, always question the necessity if we do need to do them. Uh, the handling for cares can be limited to every 6 to 8 hours to minimize the handling, especially in the first 3 days. Of course, if the baby is sick, you need to intervene more often. And uh, as I said earlier, the most experienced members of the team are better off handling and the same principle has applied in Iowa as well where they have a separate team for managing. You can review uh, the lecture from the Iowa experience shared on my channel. 
It's better to use closed suction systems on ventilated mechan mechanically ventilated babies because it's less disturbing, there is less interruption of the ventilation and less fluctuation of the carbon dioxide. The measurements for the head circumference and length can wait till the fourth day of life. A weight is measured at admission and then you can measure on the fourth and seventh day. So daily weights can be uh, done away with if you are monitoring the electrolytes and the urine output carefully to guide the fluid balance. Avoid extensive cleaning of the incubator and body wiping during the first week just to minimize the handling. The change of linen and measurement of weight should be done with two nurses and always try to have a second nurse for any action where the baby needs to be moved so that the head movement is controlled and minimal. Of course, uh, stimulation should be minimized and pain management is important to avoid the stress and pain. And we should avoid constant light exposure by covering the incubator. Avoid noise by setting the alarm tones as quietly as possible. Uh, review the alarm limits. For example, the respiratory rate alarm is superfluous in ventilated babies. You have the saturation in the heart rate alarms. You can turn off the respiratory rate alarm and acknowledge the alarms quickly as well. Do not place objects on the incubator and avoid noisy conversations near the incubator. Plan the extubation carefully as we discussed earlier. Don't extubate unless you are more than 50% confident that you will succeed. Uh, Re-intubation if needed has to be performed by senior physicians during the first two weeks of life and drawing of blood samples from the arterial line with subsequent flushing should be performed slowly uh, to avoid blood pressure fluctuations. So if the arterial line so it tends to bleed back quickly but you have to be slowing down the process 1.5 ml every 30 seconds. Limit the infusion rate of blood products to 3 hours or greater. Limit infusion time of saline bolus to 30 minutes or later. So bolus push should be avoided as far as we can. As we discussed with the measurements, same way the cranial ultrasound can be performed by the fourth day of life. In most of the settings, it doesn't change the immediate approach. And if you have a serious concern, a quick screening ultrasound by the attending consultant to rule out a bleed is an option in the first three days. The radiology scan usually is a little more time consuming because they have to take all the views and record them. But if we do a quick one earlier, the radiology scan can wait for the fourth day or later. So it's very important to introduce this as a care bundle or a QI project and the training session should be including the entire team. Further audit to monitor the implementation is important as well. I hope this is useful. Please do share. Thank you.